We're off to the World's Fair, today on Wickwired. In the summer of 1893, 27 million people descended on the city of Chicago. In Jackson Park, the grandest fair the world had ever seen burst into life, the World's Columbian Exposition. The fair celebrated the progress of the world's technology, art, and architecture in the 19th century. As an inventor, the fair was right up Chester Wickwire's alley. Chester, his brother Theodore, and his sons Charles and Frederick boarded a train for the fair in June. When they arrived, Chester purchased four of these, the official World's Fair ticket. As they strolled through a peristyle archway, the Wickwires stood awestruck before the Court of Honor. This collection of stucco-painted buildings gave the fair its famous nickname, the White City. Like any good fair, the exposition sold a dizzying array of souvenirs. Visitors emptied their pockets for everything from plates and puzzles to spoons and spittoons. Chester Wickwire brought a few trinkets home for Ardell, including this fan. The fan was designed by John W. Green, who ran a gift shop. The fan shows a bird's eye view of the fairgrounds, including the famed Midway. The mile-long Midway gave young Charles and Frederick some much-needed culture shock. On the streets of Cairo, the Midway's main attraction, the boys pass street fighters, boy acrobats, snake charmers, and sword dancers. Charles and Frederick must have gaped at the unusual throng of people that surrounded them. The boys grew up in a mostly white town, and the snake charmers and belly dancers were a far cry from their music recitals. At the center of the midway, the Wickwire stood awestruck in front of the first Ferris wheel. At 260 feet high, as tall as a 25-story building, it towered over the fair. For 50 cents each, the Wickwires crammed into a wire-netted car, which a reporter described as like being in a giant birdcage. Each car could hold 60 people standing up. 2,000 people could fit on the Ferris wheel at the same time, and a conductor in each car kept distressed passengers from having panic attacks. Fairgoers also bought souvenir photos in droves. Chester purchased this photograph of the Liberal Arts Building. This Temple of Progress featured thousands of exhibits from around the world. At its maximum capacity, 300,000 people a day wandered through the Liberal Arts Building, which a reporter called a city under one roof. The Liberal Arts Building astonished the Wickwires with its displays of art, appliances, firearms, furniture, and musical instruments. At the Tiffany Pavilion, the Wickwires even saw a silver-encrusted toilet. Five years earlier, J.B. Tiffany advised Chester on the decoration of his mansion. Chester didn't include a fancy toilet, though. After paying a quarter, the Wickwires rode an elevator to the roof of the Liberal Arts Building, where an observation deck provided a majestic view of the fair. In Emil Berliner's exhibit, the Wickwires saw the gramophone. For five cents, fairgoers could put two hard rubber tubes in their ears and listen to the popular song, The Cat Came Back. Old Brother Johnson had trouble of his own He had an old yellow cat that wouldn't leave his home He done everything he could to give the cat away He gave him to the preacher and he told him for to stay But the cat come back It's not exactly Beyonce, but it gets the point across. 
New technology wasn't the only innovation at the fair. Many of the foods we know today made their debut there. These include Cracker Jacks, Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, Aunt Jemima Syrup, Juicy Fruit, and Quaker Oats, which one critic mocked for having the consistency of a doormat. Since the World's Fair is all about innovation, we created something new using some of these foods. It consists of a Cracker Jack, Pabst Blue Ribbon, and a piece of Juicy Fruit. We call this one the Juicy Blue Jack. And remember, please drink responsibly. That's not actually half bad. I quit. <laughs> the Wickwires took this selfie in one of the fairground buildings. They probably rented a camera since visitors weren't allowed to take photos for free. For $2, equal to the fair's most expensive attraction, the Wickwires could have a photo permit. Photos like this one are extremely rare since that one day photo permit cost the equivalent of $57 today. No one saw everything at the fair, even the Wickwires. They returned home in mid-June and the fair shimmered on until October, when the bright lights of the White City finally faded to black.